said, Tiddling and Swishing Life, a little extra impromptu unboxing. Um, got a box from Retro Bassett. Uh, him and I have spoken quite a bit over Instagram and through YouTube. Uh, hopefully he'll come visit someday. He's planning on trying to stop by, taking out on the old scene him. But he sent me a little care package. So I figured I'd do a little unboxing for you guys, see what kind of retro stuff he sent me. I know one thing that I for sure is in here. The rest I don't. Let me find my knife. Got my trusty maybe dick knife. Got the Texan Texas Provisions sticker on the box. That's his clothing company. Or the company that Retro Basson Clothing. That's the website you go to. Oh, look at that. Got a hat. Cool. Always need a new hat. I just got this one, as you saw in the last unboxing. But, guys, yeah, try this one out. I got a big head, so I gotta readjust this. There we go. Little retro Basson hat. There's more than a couple lures in here. Uh, there's a note too. Uh, decals. We'll get to that after the lures. And this is what I knew he was going to be sending me. Uh, not that. These two. These, if you've actually watched my bite of the day, I've caught fish on these. And I've talked about them before. It is the black Johnson Silver Minnow. The black chrome, the black nickel. Not sure what they call the color. But these are hard to find now, the black ones. They still sell the silver and gold ones and even the copper ones, but the black ones, especially in the smaller size, these things are very hard to find. It's one of my secret weapons in tannic water um, with a little blue tail on the back, like a blue grub or something. And living in Florida, we have plenty of tannic water. This was one of my top lures through the 80s and early 90s. I always had one of these tied on. Awesome. And you know, he actually found a whole stash of these in one of his tackle trip, uh, tackle store trips. And I mentioned how much I love them. So that's why I knew I was getting these because yeah, he told me he was gonna save a couple for me. Um, that's awesome, man. I'm gonna, we got two. So I hope you saved one for yourself. We're gonna fish with them when you come to Florida. A couple more lures in here. Old school neon spot sinker. Yes, you live in Florida. Um, the good old rebel spot, or cotton cordell spot, I mean. So, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but my father was a bitter fisherman. He wasn't quite as obsessed about it as I was. But uh, when I was really young, even before I was fishing with him, we lived on our little lake, and the biggest fish he ever hooked, he didn't get it in the boat, was on a spot. So this was always, there's always one or two of these in our tackle box growing up. This is a great color though. Um, I might add it to my lure collection up here um, because it's still in the box, but we'll see. I might fish it too. But I do have a bit of a lure collection. I'll do a little uh, pan of that. I might even bust out my uh, Vintage, my old school quantum baitcaster, my very first one, I still own it. And my first Shimano baitcaster, I still own that as well. And here's some cool spearbaits. And I'd never heard of these until watching the show. These are called the Extractor. There's a purple with a, with a, a hammered Colorado blade, and it's a bucktail. And then there's like a brown with an orange, kind of a craw theme, I guess, with the same hammered willow blade. Um, he was actually talking about these not too long ago on his show. These are, uh, or actually he was on a Bateman show. I don't know. One of the other shows I saw Retro Bassett on. But I'm probably going to save one and fish one. I'll probably fish the purple one, I think. But I don't know. I like the brown one. I'll have to decide. And hopefully I'll have a bite of the day with me catching something. What do we got? We got decals. You 
close the envelope. Good thing I kept my knife out, right? And yeah, this is another spot of my uh, studio. It looks different. This is part of the lounge. The bar that all my other stuff is shot at is just over there. Got two retro bass and decals. That's perfect. One for the van, one for the boat. Awesome. I stumbled upon his channel really early on and you know, I have an old bass boat and I grew up fishing. We're basically the same age. I grew up fishing a lot of the same lures he fished and actually Gary's Tackle Box where I work fixing uh, fishing reels on the side. He's a big collector of antique and uh, vintage fishing lures and equipment. So I've kind of started collecting the stuff myself. I still have some of my old stuff, um, which next, I guess I'll show you my vintage uh, rod and reels. I think I have three still, um, four if you include the spinning setup I have. Um, I'll cut to that next. <laughs> It took me a little longer to get around to doing uh, this uh, rod and reel show and tell of my vintage rod and reel set to go along with my retro bass and unboxing. We got the lures right here, all but one of the Jonathan Silver Minnows because I already unboxed it and put it on a rod. Uh, I've been on a flipping bite, so I haven't had a chance to really use it, but I have it ready. Um, so we're gonna start with my rods and then I'll show you my tackle collection. My tackle collection, I'll just kind of do a video pan of it. Um, there's too many things to explain. I'll wait till I get a personal visit from Retro Bassin to go through my actual tackle collection because there's quite a bit. And I kind of have these set up in the order that I got them. As far as these were actually, most of these are setups and combos that I actually grew up using with a couple replacements and maybe one add-on since then. But first, we have my first rod. It's not the original reel. It is a Berkeley lightning rod. It must be like four feet something. Let's see, I'm five, eight. And it comes to my mid chest. But granted, I got this when I was six years old. Um, I even carved my initials in the hilt of the pistol grip, TL. I don't know if you can see that. This is my very first fishing rod that my dad bought me for Christmas or my birthday. I can't remember which one it is. I used to have it paired up with a small Zebco um, spin cast reel because, you know, I was six. And since then, I put this little Ryobi on here. Um, this thing's shot. It doesn't really work anymore. I used it a lot back in the 80s. Um, I think Debo rebuilt one of these on his channel. Maybe I'll have to rebuild mine. The anti-reverse doesn't work very well. And the spool bearings are really gunked up. But considering I probably got this when in 19... Well, I got the rod... So let me do some math. I got this rod in probably 1981, I'm guessing, around then. Um, and this reel, I didn't add this till probably the late 80s, after I had already purchased my first spin caster. But I'll throw in some photos of some of the fish I caught um, on this exact rod, like I said, with my old Zepco spin caster. Um, actually on the same lake and even the same spot that Mikey Balls started his uh, YouTube big bass fishing career on, on uh, Lake Walberg. <laughs> Cheers, yeah. Whiskey and fishing tackle, it's my favorite thing. Favorite combo. But yeah, I caught a lot of big fish on this. I have no idea what the rating is. It's all been worn off long, long ago. But like I said, it's like a five foot rod. My dad bought for this, bought me this for, my father bought this for me when I was a real little kid. And I actually have these rods set up with the lures these other rods, these next four, were actual rods and reels that I fished with 
and I have them set up with what I would normally fish them with back then. And this right here is one of my most prized possessions. It is a Quantum 310 MG. This was the first bait caster I ever bought from Gary at Gary's Tackle Box now. It used to be the Tackle Box then. I actually fix reels for Gary now, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, it all comes around. And this is a replacement rod for the original Quantum, uh, what do they call these, the bottle rods? The ones with the big tapered thing? But this is exactly the same rod I bought it with at Gary's when I was, I think, 14 years old, when I finally decided to buy a bait caster. Um, maybe a little younger, can't remember exactly. When did we get our bass boat? So now 86, I would have been 12. Yeah, I don't want us 12. Um, Quantum, this 310 MG, I mean, I used this thing until maybe 10 years ago. I'd still throw it. And I, if it had a faster gear ratio and a slightly better anti-reverse, I would probably can still use it. I mean, the handle is pretty short compared to modern rods, but this was a long handle then. And this was also considered like a heavy duty rod. This is, what does it say it actually rating is? I don't know if you can still read it. Read it. Um, yeah, this is a medium heavy. What is it, a six? Six foot, medium heavy. Uh, I remember when I broke the original one of these, I upgraded to a six six lightning rod, um, which is long broken as well. So when I needed to find a new rod for this, actually found this rod used for sale somewhere. I don't even really remember where. But like I said, this is my first bait casting setup ever. And this is what I would normally fish it with it. Is This is 17 pound uh, trilene. This is that, um, the blue neon one, or yeah, the one that has a little reflectant. I remember being really into that because you could watch the bite. And I have a Florida rigged culprit moccasin. The only thing that's not right is I would have had a true turn hook, but those are long gone from my tackle box. I mean, this is an old Gamagatsu traditional worm offset worm hook. And this is a screw in weight, just like the bullets I use on my Cinco's that I caught my PB on. And these bullet weights used to come with a label calling them the Florida rig. And that's where that came from in terms of why I use that term all the time. Was that when you screw your weight in, that's what made a difference than a Texas rig. That's a Florida rig. And it's basically like putting a bobber stop or something, but without having to put anything on. One of the things I do really like about new rods are lure uh, keepers. I don't know if you all remember having to put your uh, lure on the first guide all the time. But so, for years, I only had two main rods on the boat. It would be this one, and I'd always start with the Culpra Worm, always in this color, um, set up just like that. And I'd had my spinning rod, and this is the original spinning reel I bought. I believe this is the second version of this Berkeley uh, lightning rod. I broke the first one and actually had Gary replace it. Um, this is an old school Shimano bait runner, quick fire. I don't know if any of you guys remember quick fire. If you haven't used it, the thing was that you're supposed to be able to pull and hold the line one handed. You didn't need to flip the bale. And so the bale also returns back to the spot, which is kind of odd now with such good anti-reverse to think that you would want the reel to kick back. But you needed to kick back to make your cast. But like I said, this is the first spinning reel I bought with my own money. Um, I bought this up in Massachusetts, up in Wareham, from uh, the local tackle shop. What was it called? Something in M. D and M, J and M. I don't remember the name of the tackle shop, but I bought this in Wareham, Mass, while I was visiting. Like I said, this is a replacement Berkeley rod. This is like a six foot medium. And this is what I'd always have tied on. The original size Rapala that I fell in love with. Three hook floater. 
and I would throw this around the weeds. Oop. And I'd throw this around cover because obviously you have treble hooks. And this has eight pound green mono. It's what I used to throw on it all the time. Occasionally I would drop down to six. Um, but yeah, that freaking Rapala, that caught me some fish. Which is kind of funny, I go out now and on my deck there are more than just two rods. But I almost always have a jerk bait. I almost always have some kind of worm or stick bait. So I'm still pretty much running the same tackle that I was running in the 80s when we first got my old sea nymph out there. To the classics. And then let's go to the next one I acquired. I acquired this reel in middle school. I traded, I believe, I can't remember if it was a transformer or a G.I. Joe tank, but it was my first Shimano Bantam. And I'd also started getting into cycling a lot at this point. Um, and so Shimano was what I used. So I was really looking forward to using the Shimano reel. And this is also what Roland Martin fished with. This is not the original rod. The original rod is long, broken, and gone. I'm not even sure where this rod came from in my collection, but it's an old school Abu Garcia 5.6 pistol grip, um, just slightly different than the pistol grip rod I had this set up on originally. But look at the size of that handle. That must be like a 60, 70 millimeter handle. But this reel, I mean, it is still butter smooth to this day. It's one of the smoothest reels I've ever owned, and it is still just as good as it always was. Uh, this I would have rigged up usually, like it is now, with 12 pound mono. Mono was our only real option back then. And this is what I would throw something like the, the Devil's Horse with, which I know, Retro Bass, and you love this thing. And so did the bass. Yet again, no hook keeper, so you gotta put it on the guide. And if you watch this, you can see the anti-reverse. You got slack. There's a little, it's a whole different system. There's a pawl and a gear. So that little play used to be acceptable for your anti-reverse, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, I still love this reel. That's why, I mean, I love all this tackle, that's why I still own it. Like I said, I've owned it since it was new. Never got rid of it. Um, when I moved to California, I just stuck it in the shed and had to clean it all up when I moved back. But yeah, that was a uh, good trade. I missed the rod that it came with, but like I said, it's broken a long time ago. Now we'll come to the last combo I bought, like, as a thing. And I had to save my money for this one. This is the Bantam Mag with the matching fighting rod bull whip, which is also in these bottle type rods. Pistol grip, the real seat adjustments back here, which is super slick, but not very sturdy. <laughs> this is a 5.6, medium heavy, I think. Medium or medium heavy? Is a medium, 5.6. I'm running 12 pound mono, um, like I would back then. And there it is. This is an old, one of my old black Johnson Silver Minnows from back in the day. And then, so this was like maybe the second or third rod I had that I took out often. Um, this one came and went. Um, but this one stayed on the boat. So on most days in the, say, in my high school era, when I used to keep my boat out at Noonan's Lake and fish with my buddy Gabe Valla, who had his boat out there too, um, and still go bug Gary, I would have my quantum set up with a worm. I'd have my spinner rod set up with a jerk bait, And then I'd have this set up with a spoon. And that's when I fell in love with the spoon. Usually I would have the end of a curly tail, uh, black with a blue tail worm on the end. And since I don't own any of those, 
tails at the moment. I don't have one on here. Any of those worms to take the tail off. But I was just explaining to my buddy the other day that I went out on my birthday, which is January 8th. It's coming up. One year when we still kept the boat at the fish camp. So I'm guessing this would be maybe 1989, 88 at the latest. And there's a cold front coming and I had like an hour to go out there, maybe two before the weather hit. And I caught a bunch of big bass in about two hours on this lure in the same area that just yesterday, yesterday was the first of 2022, within maybe 500 yards, maybe a little further away from where this happened in 1988, I caught my first bass of 2022, seven pounds, 11 ounces on a JDM jig that I got out of that box that Oliver sent me. So I'm just saying, some things still stay the same, even though I didn't catch anything on the spoon that day, they were in the reeds, you need to pitch the cover. But like I said, this is one of my spoons from the 80s. I still have it. It's all corroded and pitted. So I'm glad to have some new ones still in the box. It's not gonna stay in the box. I might display some of the lures, but I am using these. This Bantam MGL is the reel that Roland Martin made famous. This was at the height of his TV show. It was the first real Shimano with good magnetic cast control. It might have even been the first one with magnetic cast control. And it's black and gold. I mean, I lusted after this setup. Even though I already had this setup, the Quantum. I gotta admit the Shimano's actual magnetic drag control worked better than the Quantum version. But the Quantum reel itself it was way heavier duty like this was made way more appropriate for florida fishing than where i was fishing and how i was fishing than this that's why this was my main worm rod which is how we cut all our big fish and this was my other lure rod and actually this rod is lighter than this rod but i love them both that's why i still own them since the 80s I need to make an actual rod rack display so I can have these out of the room with my other rods. So, there you go. That, it's added on to the unboxing. Next up, I'll give you a quick um, video tour of my antique lure collection. I'm not going to do a breakdown of the antique lure collection until Retro Bassin actually comes here and breaks it down with me. Yeah.